We are in 1914 when the war breaks out, we are uh, at best a minor uh, military power. At the outbreak of World War I, there was no National Guard unit in Plateau. Scott Carey had served in the Iowa National Guard. In 1917, he was living in Platteville, Wisconsin, but wanted to serve. I called the governor and he directed me to the Adjutant General. The Adjutant General informed me to get 150 men as rapidly as I could get them. We enlisted about 300, but 202 passed the physical examination. Carey was not alone in his efforts to augment the Guard's strength. Throughout the state, community leaders seeking to serve gathered others willing to do their part. The same story played out in 72 Wisconsin communities. The state itself, the governor had to initiate um, moves to fund the clothing and the supply of its own National Guard members so that they would be ready to go. Around the state, a massive shift of manpower began with farmers and laborers, businessmen and university professors answering the nation's call to service. In all, Wisconsin sent more than 15,000 National Guardsmen to join the American Expeditionary Force. Mobilizing Camp Douglas, August 4th, 1917. We remained there on September 30th. We moved to Waco, Texas, Camp McLaughlin. There we went into training. The reorganization and organization of the 32nd Division. And uh, somebody had been in it before, he says, we're hollering out of retreat. And our company commander, George F. O'Connell, he hollers retreat hell. He says, B Company, stand. We got the shell, but I thought it would hit me on the head. Screamed so loud when it passed over me, it couldn't have been over a tree for a foot above my head. The American Army has before it the most difficult task of any army in Europe. It is on the neck of the bottle, which if broken means disaster to the enemy's armies. In consequence of this, the enemy is accumulating before us his best remaining troops, with orders to hold on at any cost, and he is holding on for dear life. The Americans are green, not well trained perhaps, and their commanders had yet to really see the kind of total warfare that was being fought in Europe with tremendous modern firepower. The result is the Americans make many of the same mistakes the British and the French had made in 1914, and the cost is horrendous. I should like to write a much longer letter, but I have looked at my watch and I must get busy with other duties. I must bury the dead. Thirty second Division was sent to this sector to shatter that line. You are shock troops, les terribles, the French call you. Fighting sons of guns, the Americans call you. You're the very flower of our army. You that remain up there on the front have been tried by fire. I, as a Wisconsinite, feel proud to know that, that the 32nd Division is, and now 32nd Brigade, is my division and brigade.